guys, welcome back to another MD Fish Tanks build video. So over my shoulder there, you can see Timmy, my turtle's tank. Timmy! He's a musk turtle, um, and I set up his tank there about two months ago. It's a very simple design, and it served its purpose really well, which was to be able to easily clean and maintain it. But I think we can do better than that. It's good to show setups that are simple, but it's also good to show you know, our skills and what we can do. So I want to do a really cool aqua terrarium style uh, above, that means like above water and below water, planted plants everywhere, the lot. Let's just go for it and make it absolutely special. So yeah, you can see, oh, here he comes. He's so cool, isn't he? Yeah, like I say, he's a musk turtle, so they stay nice and small. Um, he has grown like three times the size of when I first bought him. So for sense of scale, like, there's my finger. So he's nice and sweet. He thinks I'm going to feed him. Sorry, buddy. We're going to give you a new enclosure. Enclosure? Is that the right word? Tank? I don't know. Anyway, nice and simple design, like I said, and it serves its purpose as well. It's early in the morning, so his uh, UV light isn't on at the moment. It only comes on for certain times of the day. I'm holding his food. That's why he's going nuts. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to have to get these stones out, get the sand out, plants, because we want a clean slate to start from. It's going to be quite a complicated build, um, but it should look great. I'm also going to need something temporary to put Timmy in, and I'm going to do the same as what I did before, just a small little uh, tank I've got with a rock in. He'll be absolutely fine for a few days or so, or ha however long it takes, uh, regular water changes and things like that. Because remember, turtles don't actually breathe um, underwater, they just they breathe out of water, but they require water to eat their uh, food, and they will poo in it as well, so re regular water changes are needed. Right, so we've got our tank sorted, we've got our light sorted. If you're wondering about the stand, I made this. Um, yes, that is absolutely fine before you all freak out. I've had this full of water for well over a year. Uh, it's been, it's, it doesn't make it, it's perfectly flat, you see. So those three points of contact on a glass are fully supporting everything. We're all good, do not worry. Now to build up our retaining wall, there's multiple ways of doing this. Some people choose to use like foam and then they make the shape out of foam, like a false background or a false bottom, and then stick rocks all over it. That's one way of doing it. I like to do it a little bit differently. I like to use all natural stuff to build it, and then just use the odd little bit of glue just to secure stuff when needed. So that's what I'm gonna do for this one. First of all, I need to take you into my other studio where I've got all my supplies. So here we go, this is the supply section. We've got loads and loads of things to choose from, but I think I'm gonna be going with this bog wood. I think it's gonna look wicked. It's gonna give that sort of swampy look. And then for rocks, we've got lots to choose from. I want something dark. So the black lava rock that you can see there is a bit too dark, but I do like these stones that I collected recently. So I wanna use quite a lot of those. And then I can find a gravel that's like similar to fill in the gaps. Right, so there's our first layer in, and you could see there, I took out those two rocks in there and there. I just felt it was too sort of, I don't know, wall-y? <laughs> it, look, it looks better with gaps, doesn't it? It looks much more natural. So if we come around to the side, you can see there's a big gap behind, and on the top there, look, you can see big gap behind there. We need to fill those areas in, otherwise our turtle's just gonna get trapped or waste is just gonna get caught in those areas. And to do that, I've got this. Yeah, so I managed to find this stuff at my local garden centre. It's very dirty, so it needs a quick wash, and then we can see the colour. I think it's going to be like a proper grey, but <laughs> it's not looking great at the moment, but it will do, it will. Thank you. 
there we go layer one so you can see there why i've done what i've done big open foreground and that'll actually taper back as we go higher so there'll be tons of swim room for little timmy remember he's a tiny little turtle he doesn't need a huge amount of swim space and they don't swim that much anyway to be honest so yeah look, all the areas are closed off all the way around and the reason we've left it like that is now we can build the second layer up putting some rocks in so that they don't have to balance on anything because they've got a, a platform to sit on it's a lot safer a lot more secure and a lot more sort of long term um, as everything grows in Okay, that's enough height. That's looking pretty cool, isn't it? It's like really impactful, I think. I might cover up this area here with some more rocks. I'm not sure yet. But I bought from the shop some of these little cardboard cup things. And what I want to do is place them <laughs> back there, but neatly put in. I'll show you. Let me show you. Right, there you go. I put three in there. I might not need three, but it's harder to put more in than to just take one out. So I've done three and then I'll put some more on this side as well. And then if I want to later on, I can put some behind. I haven't even told you what they are, have I? <laughs> so basically, I'm going to be able to put aqua soil in these or even normal soil, to be honest, whatever some ferns or something like that come in. Terrestrial ferns we're talking, ones that will grow out of the water and they can just sit in there nicely. And I'll make sure that the water is able to transfer into the soil that's in there using the mosses as a wick from when the water is flowing down the back because eventually we're going to have the filter outlet just trickling down the back there and it should be able to cover everything. It should be able to travel along the wood, it will travel along the moss that we're going to have on it. Oh, it should look great. There we go, we're all set up. So yeah, this does look pretty pants at the moment, but I want to get our uh, decorative sand or the, the area at the bottom all filled in now and then put the water in and start running the filter so we, we know where the water's going to be going and that could determine where we're going to plant. Oh yeah, I think that's a really naturalistic look. I've gone for like a fine sand and then a sort of medium, I suppose medium gravel. Yeah, so basically those bits are too big for Timmy to swallow. And then the sand, if he does swallow that, that's fine, that'll pass through him. So we're all good. Okay, now to fit the filter. Filter-wise, I'm using an external canister filter. It's got the heater built in, which is awesome because it means I don't have to see that in the tank. Okay, we are up and running. It looks an absolute mess at the moment, but we've got filtration. So if you look there, the spray bar is getting this bit of cardboard wet, which is good. They're going to get these all wet, which will be perfect for the soil that's going in them. I've got the same on this side. Oh, there we go. I've got the same on this side and I've ripped up some more um, of the cardboard to act as a wick to transport it over to this one. This one will get wet as well then, and everything will have water. That's the key, you see. You need all the stuff above to have some form of water, even if it's just a little bit. The, the trickle down the wood there is ideal. It means we can put mosses all the way up it, actually, and it should look fantastic. Uh, yeah, excited. Right, it's been a day. The tank's looking awesome. The water's cleared up, but it's got this really, really nice tint to it that I think I'm gonna keep because 
it's a real natural boggy sort of look yeah this is what i'm talking about look at that cool tint i think that looks really really like natural it'll look more so when we sort of the top area at the moment it looks a bit weird on its own and then up the top here i've also left this running so i could see what happens to the cardboard pockets if you like um, they're actually containing moisture so it shows that the, the moisture is traveling I've kind of joined them up with ripped bits of cardboard as you can see and that's keeping that moisture flowing into the other one a little bit too much in that one obviously but I think it's going to work really really well I can adjust that one as well so that it doesn't spit up over the top like that because you don't want too much water going onto the roots of the plants that we're going to put in there now before we put all our plants in, I want to get my mosses on and to do that um, I need to cover all of this gravel in like a, a mix of aqua soil, cocoa fiber, and you know, like dried mosses. I just mulch them all together and then we can just place it all on top. So this is super easy to do. All I'm doing is putting the dry aqua soil into the bowl and then I'm adding water to it. And this means that we can then squeeze it together to make it form sort of shapes. That on its own probably won't be a long-term solution and it won't hold moisture that well either. To help with that, I'm also putting in some terrarium substrate and dried mosses. As we mold all these together now with the water, it's gonna create a really good substrate for the terrestrial mosses to bind to. Eventually they'll grow into it and it'll also provide them with a good amount of moisture at all times. I'm now placing filter floss on top of all the stones that we see in there. This is just basically to stop any of the soil leaking down into the water column. It will eventually make its way down there, but we, you know, we want to try and prevent it as best we can. Right, so I've hosed everything down and you can also see inside the cardboard pockets. Uh oh, hang on. There we go. <laughs> Inside the carpool pockets, we've got um, some of the filter floss as well. That's when we've got the uh, potting soil in there that's going to be on the plants. It won't just go straight into the water column. It'll just, it will make its way in there eventually, but it's not just going to flood it, so we should be okay. Next thing we can do now is put all the axle mix on top of the filter floss. Right, lesson learned there. Do not get your soil mix too close to running water. I put that section there where that water's dripping, like right on it and of course forgetting and it, it just pushed it all down into the water. It should clear in no time. To be honest, it's actually making it look more and more natural, but we don't want it too murky, do we? Uh, so yeah, you can see we've got the aqua soil dotted around. That's gonna give us a nice sort of base for all the uh, mosses that we want to go on there to sit on. And here are those mosses. So I'm in an area just outside the studio and there's every time I drive past this, I think, oh my goodness, that moss, the twigs and everything, it looks so good. So I'm just gonna collect some of this up, put it in a pot and we can put it in our aquarium or aquascape or aquatrium, whatever it is. <laughs> Right, it has now been several days since I first put the moss in. And do you know what? Some interesting little things are happening. First point to note, how awesome is the color of that water? I don't know what it is, but there's something about having green above and no green below. When you've got tanned water that just worked. Tanned, by the way, is this color. It's the wood. The wood is leaching like the browns into the water. You can actually get rid of it by doing water changes and also adding something like Purigen into your filter. 
but you know I, I love it I think it looks great and actually it's gonna replicate a similar environment to what we want for the turtle you know we want it to be as realistic as possible no we don't we don't always want that do we <laughs> in this tank we want it to be as realistic as possible I do I'm even gonna be adding leaf litter and making it more like a proper bog or swamp I mean at the end of the day that's where these turtles are from but even just like that it looks fantastic doesn't it but you can't stop there we've got to create a forest so that's why I've got those cups at back remember is because they are there to be planted into and I've got some absolutely awesome ferns to go into them I want those whole areas sort of coming over like that and then we've got a gap in the middle it'd be like a focal point with the the light coming through remember we still got to put on the UV bulb for Timmy even though he doesn't bask that much it'll still be good when he's near the surface of the water yeah but the next job let's get those ferns in so here's the ferns we got to choose from I, I don't really I don't know asp Asplenium dry terrace. Look, I can't even do the aquatic plants. I'm not even going to attempt these ones. But look, I went for a variety of ferns. We've got like, look at that. That's beautiful, isn't it? How nice is that? And then I've got this sort of finer one at the back. Again, I want to create different textures. So we've got big ones, smaller ones. And then again, this one as well, completely different to the others. And in fact, if it's not enough, I can go back and get more. They're super cheap. Like they're massive and the same price as a tiny aquatic plant. So that's awesome. So they're all in big pots of soil, a bit too big. So what I can do is take them out, remove some of the soil, and then we can just put them straight into our cups, remember, that we put up here because these cups are not in the water. They're just receiving a little bit of moisture. You can maybe see in this one. All right, there we go. Look, now you can see, look around the edge of that where I've put the, the filter floss at the bottom. Look, there's moisture. So that's gonna be just enough to keep the soil moist and the ferns growing awesome. Yeah, same again on that side, look, perfect. Right, I just pulled this whole fern out, look. Off, off. Well, anyway, yeah, there we go. The whole thing is full of soil. That's way too much soil. There's quite a lot of roots as well. So we'll have to break some off, but they'll all grow back. It'll be okay. I mean, that one piece is going to be too much for those little pots. We can try and split it though, can't we? Okay, there we go. Once I'd removed most of the excess soil, I mean, there was way too much in that pot for what was needed. Though that's pretty much the root system on half. You saw me split it in half there, which is perfect because just like with aquascaping, we just want to keep, you know, a little bit of each plant on each side. It just creates a good balance. Not always, but you know, most of the time stick to that. Unless you've got a big feature plant or something. Anyway, so that's quite a good size to better squeeze and put into one of those cups. I might have to trim it a little, but yeah, let's get it in. Right, so I did have this fern in here. Um, I've wrapped some electrical tape around the cardboard so you can't see it and it's black. Now, when I put it back, okay, it does look pretty decent. I mean, I've just placed it there, but it would be placed better. But I feel like I'm destroying that sort of, I don't know, like openness in that area. So I'm gonna put it in that gap instead. Look, if I put it there, da -da -da, like that. I mean, I'll do it properly in a minute, but yeah. And there we go. And it just looks a lot better, doesn't it? Having that sort of negative space in the middle as well. Yeah, I'm definitely going to go with that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Right. Some of you won't get this and some of you will, but there is something about like having a vision and holding on to that vision while you're creating something and then it turning out either as good as you envisioned <laughs> or even better. And in this case, I think it looks better than I even thought it would. It, it looks honestly like a little part of a forest stream and that's what I wanted to go for. 
It's going to be nice and gloomy in some areas for Timmy when he wants to hide. When he wants to hide, he can. Look, little area in there. But he'll always be coming to the foreground, you know, to get food off me. You've seen how much he begs. I'm also going to be putting in a couple of fish with him as well. Bigger fish that are fast. White cloud mountain minnows. They are quick. And I just think they'll add a little bit of interest. And there's no way he's going to be able to catch them. They're almost as big as him, to be honest. And now we're ready to add the finer details and put Timmy into the tank. So, yeah, Timmy is still in his little temporary tank thing doing absolutely fine the perfect thing about this little one is that i can just keep changing the water whenever he does a poop so that's ideal can feed him change the water he's doing absolutely great in there for the time being so like i say i want to go and get some details to go in the tank. look at how good it looks from here look at that it's awesome isn't it yeah i want to go get some details from it and for that we need to go to the woods or forest or whatever you call it wherever you're from <laughs> Just some leaves um, for my aquarium. Yeah, to add some uh, sort of tannings and to the water. Oh, wow. Well, guys, I could not have picked a more perfect day to do this. I mean, it hasn't stopped raining in the UK for like two weeks, and it's absolutely perfect today. It's actually warm as well. I've got my hoodie on. You can buy this at my shop, by the way. Uh, her link is up there somewhere. But I don't actually need it on. It's like it's really warm. Anyway, we're here to collect sticks with moss and leaves basically <laughs> okay so i have done this before now there's certain sticks that are good certain sticks that are bad this is a bad stick it's quite rotten and look at that i just broke it so easily but this one for instance would be a good stick it's quite sort of dry and you know you can tell that it's just it's not going to completely just go to to rot in the water go to rot i don't know what that means and that right there is an awesome piece of moss look at that i'm gonna have that one <laughs> Well, leaves, it's not very difficult. They're all around us. Any of these leaves will be absolutely fine. And by the time we've boiled them up as well, they'll sink and they'll be absolutely perfect in the aquarium. Right, this piece right here, for instance, absolutely perfect. We've got some good details on it and it's like proper hardwood as well. So it's gonna go well underwater and above water. Oh, look how good that moss looks. <laughs> Oh my goodness, jackpot. Now, never take more than you need. You only need a little bit. It's not gonna hurt. It's gonna come back in no time, isn't it? So it's not like we're destroying the whole area. This is so nice looking. Fallen tree, something about a fallen tree covered in moss that just looks good. Okay, we got a really nice haul there. Some really awesome looking pieces. But for now, back to the studio. Honey, I'm home. Click subscribe. Right, so we've got some awesome little pieces there and I don't want to sort of overcrowd it all, but I feel like we want something just sort of coming in this section and maybe that section continuing on the sort of triangular composition and also be able to place something up here that's out of the water and nice and green as well, just bringing it into the foreground a little bit more, but not too much. We don't want to overdo it. It only needs a little bit more detail, to be honest. Otherwise, it might end up looking a little bit cluttered, but that's not too much of a problem because you tend to find that these little stream corners are quite sort of jam-packed full of of greenery, mosses, wood, all that kind of thing. So you guys may have also noticed that I didn't use all the moss and wood I collected. So I brought it back out here, laid it out in all this sort of area and it'll get rainwater on it. And hopefully that means that we can use it another time. We don't want to really waste anything. It's not good to do that to the environment really, is it? And moss does take her quite a while to grow. So we want to save it and it looks great, doesn't it? And look at all of this moss here. This is awesome as well. All growing in this little bit on the side of the road. 
<laughs> future, we can use that in the future. Right guys, there we go. I think we're there. Like, I only wanted to add those small details, but they do really make a big difference, just the way they sort of creep into the water and connect, you know, the top part of the tank to the bottom part. See what I mean? It looks great. I think we're ready to put Timmy in. Timmy, Timmy, Timmy. Are you ready? What? Timmy? Where is he? Oh, <laughs> there he is. Right, let's do this. Okay, so I've placed Timmy look right on that central bit. That's to be that will be the main bit that he can come in and out of. In a minute, we'll fit his light as well, so that that's that's the area that it focuses on. But it's best to put them on something so they can climb into the water. You know, it just gives them a moment to be able to catch their breath because obviously they have lungs, they breathe air. If you just dunk them straight in, they might not have taken a gulp of air. But he will move in any moment. He'll just decide, okay, I'm vulnerable out here, and I just need to get in in that water. There we go, exactly right on cue. Look at him, oh, he looks great already. Calm down, calm down, all will be okay, little Timmy. Oh, he's looking awesome. So it's gonna be great for him to explore. So you can see, look, those pieces of gravel, way too big for his mouth. And then the sand underneath is okay. What are you doing, Timmy? Like, that you've got this whole place to explore, yeah? I've made this beautiful tank for you, and you wanna get lodged underneath the filter intake. Come on then, come around. Oh, he looks beautiful, I love him. Okay guys, an important point to note, turtles like to bask or need to bask rather. So they absorb vitamins through their shell and they get that from sunlight in the wild. Now obviously I'm in a studio, I don't have sunlight, but I do have a bulb. Now the bulb produces UVB and UVA light. That's like heat and suntans. <laughs> now most turtles like Timmy, they don't really bask much, if at all, to be honest. In fact, I've had Timmy for like, I don't know, three quarters of a year now, and I've not seen him bask once. I've not caught him running off on the basking area, none of that. But what I have seen is that he perches near the edges, so he likes to sort of float around the edge. He doesn't come right out of land, he never, ever, ever does that. Uh, maybe some musk turtles, if you've got a musk turtle and you've seen them do that, let me know in the comments. My old turtles used to bask constantly. I had, uh, I had Cumberland sliders, which is like a version of the redhead sliders. They were constantly out, like most of the day just sat there in the sun or the lamp. <laughs> But Timmy's not the same, maybe that's why he's so small. <laughs> but we've got to provide for his needs just in case he does want to do that. Like I say, even though he doesn't come right out of the water, he does sort of perch near the edges and that means he's still going to absorb the UV light, uh, just even if he's slightly under the water. He never comes right out, but it's still going to work, isn't it? Oh, that looks really nice, doesn't it? It's giving it like a sort of warmer coloration and uh, the, it, the camera picks it up really nicely as well. So yeah, I have this light on for between, no, it's eight hours, yeah, eight hours for sure. I have it set for eight hours because I have the light, you know, the, the white light, the strip light, I have that on for 12 hours. 12 hours I think simulates sort of a day cycle, so that's why I do 12 hours, which would be good for the ferns. We might find that a few of the ferns that are really close there into that light section, those edges might get a bit singed, but you know, that would just add to the realism, won't it? Everywhere else should be fine. Temperatures are good. I checked the temperature down here. Yeah, we're getting good heat as well. So that'll, you know, that'll pull Timmy to that area. Like I say, I will never ever see him basking, but he will float around that area. Just on the edge there, he'll just sort of sit and perch there. He'll perch there. He'll find his own little area and he'll love it. Timmy's now been in the tank for a day. Let's take a little look at how he's getting on. And here he is. Hello mate, <laughs> he loves this little corner. I was gonna block it up, but he can't get in or get caught anywhere, and he seems to like it, so I'm just gonna leave it. He seems comfortable there, and he's, and he's staring at us. <laughs> right, so I have said that I think I wanna put some little fish in with him. Now, be prepared that turtles will eat fish. So if, if it fits in their mouth, they will try and catch it, and they will try and eat it. So to stop that, we need to make sure we get fish big enough that that's not gonna happen, and I've got just the ones, follow me. Okay, so over in this section here, I made this sort of shallow stream aquarium quite a while ago, and it's got some white cloud mountain minnows in there. Now, the water level is obviously low. They don't mind that. This sort of replicates the streams that they're from. <laughs> and I think they'll be a really good addition. There's five in here, I think. 
I can only see four currently, but yeah, there is because I checked earlier. <laughs> and this is all changing soon, you see. This whole section is all coming out. I've got a big four foot tank coming here. It's just, yeah, the whole section is going to be different and I uh, can't wait for that. But yeah, let's get these fish out and put them into their new tank. Well, that went massively easier than expected. Got all five there. I couldn't find the other one for a while and he was hiding right at the back. It's quite interesting, really. Look at all of this um, pearl weed. That's actually how it grows out of the water. It's basically all just backed up there and grown so thick that it's just growing immersed, which looks really cool. We've got the same thing going on there as well with the moss. Overall, pretty cool looking tank. I've had it for a while now. It doesn't really change though, and I like tanks that evolve and change. This isn't really one of those. So, but anyway, it's not about this tank. Let's get these fish into their new home. I don't know why I just said it like that. <laughs> Okay, as you can see, the white clouds are in. Now, the, I didn't have to temp track or make anything like that because, <laughs> because all the temperatures are, are set to the same. The rooms are heated, remember? So both tanks had the same temperature water. Timmy is confused. What on earth is in my tank? He will try, he will have a go. They will eventually work out that he is, you know, dangerous and they won't go near him. You know, they're not stupid fish, aren't he? He's not gonna be quick enough. He's gonna try. So yeah, Timmy's taking a little look there, isn't he? He didn't even attempt it, actually. Maybe he's waiting for, like, the perfect ambush. I don't know, but... Okay, now he's going across. He's going on the chase. Like, this is good for him. It's really good for him to be able to experience something more than nothing in a tank, in my opinion. His usual only stimulus is what's ever's outside the tank, which is me. But now he's got these cool fish floating around as well. You know, I, I think that he, they're going to be fine. He's, I think he's already decided they're way too quick for me. So he spotted him again. Look, see what he does. Go on in, Timmy. Go, on, go and take a look. Right, they're coming back, they're coming back. Look at the males there, like, flaring. That's that's really cool. Oh, there's the other one. I was going to say there, where's the other one gone? So they're going to... Timmy's going to wait still until they go near him, obviously, and then he's going to pounce. Timmy, they are your friends. You must not hurt them. Do you understand? Yes, master, I understand. They will be friends, and I will live harmoniously with them. He 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 he. Okay, here we go. Look, he's spotted again. Right, he's going to have another little look. I reckon it won't be long before he realises these these guys are way too quick for me and he won't waste energy, especially when I can just feed him. I've already fed him, by the way, today, so he won't be hungry. It's just really interesting to him. <laughs> You've got no chance, Timmy. Look, as soon as they realise he's there, they're gone. Yeah, we're all good, we're all good. The tank looks fantastic, though. Absolutely loving it. Oh, yeah, look, we've got our heat lamp on because... Uh, UVA, UVB, because it's midday now and it's set to come on for an eight-hour period throughout the day. There he is again. Look, he's still taking another look. It, I think they're fine. They're going to be absolutely fine. I mean, they won't fit in his mouth and he might try and bite one, but they're going to wiggle free really quick. But like I say, it's really, really good for Timmy to have this stimulus, isn't it? Go on then. Let's see what happens. They're coming close. They're coming to have a look themselves, look. <laughs> when they get too close, see, he moves and then they move. Yeah, we're going to be fine. Awesome. So a couple of points to note, guys. In the end, I decided not to put any leaf litter in, and that's just because there's so many tannings or so much tannings in the water already. I don't think we need any more. Maybe I'll add some in at a later date once we've done water changes and the water starts to clear. Also, remember, it's safe for me to add fish to this aquarium straight away because the filter has been fitted before, you know, and it's been running for such a long time, months and months and months. So we're all good uh, for the beneficial bacteria and everything's great. Well guys, I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. If you have, don't forget to hit the like, the subscribe button, and I will see you on the next one.